Okay, great, thank you. So I get the great pleasure of announcing the winner of the University of Melbourne Seizure Prediction Challenge. Um, and we were very fortunate to have great support for this challenge from the American Epilepsy Society, the NIH, Kaggle and MathWorks. And this contest would not be possible without their support. Um, now I'm presenting on behalf of a bunch of other people, in particular Levin Coleman, who coordinated the project, Philippa Caroli, who's in the audience today, um, David Braden and Professor Mark Cook, who led the NeuroVista study. Uh, before I announce the winner, I'd like to provide a little bit of context on seizure forecasting. Now, epilepsy is a very unique disease in that the percentage of time spent experiencing symptoms is very low. For example, the average time spent in seizures for patients in the NeuroVista study was less than 0.05% of the total time within the study. Yet uncontrolled seizures have a profound effect on the lives of patients and their caregivers. The goal of seizure prediction is, is to provide freedom and safety for patients during the 99.95% of the time that they're not having seizures. And despite the large number of new medications that are now available, the proportion of seizure-free patients has not significantly altered over the last 20 years. And seizure prediction could be the best hope for these people. Now the literature on seizure prediction is dominated by algorithms. Let me just go forward a bit here. The seizure prediction is dominated by algorithms that track complexity of the EEG. And despite the sophistication of algorithms, we rarely have any certainty that methods will work in a prospective sense. This is due to small data sets and low number of seizures per patient. And there's a high level of patient heterogeneity. The research community attempted to solve seizure forecasting with competitions at the third and fourth workshops on seizure prediction. Now these workshops are gatherings of the world's best researchers and seizure mechanisms, and the next one will occur next year in Minneapolis. The competitions had data sets which were relatively large in terms of the number of patients, but did not have a large number of seizures per patient, and this posed a few problems. Now the low number of seizures per patient were overcome with the NeuroVista seizure forecasting device. The NeuroVista device provided 24-7 neurophysiology from intracranial EEG for the sole purpose of epileptic seizure prediction. In 2014, the preclinical data from the NeuroVista device, recorded from canines, was released to Kaggle for another seizure prediction contest. Now for those who don't know, Kaggle is a web-based data science crowdsourcing platform that specializes in machine learning and classification problems. 654 participants from across the world competed and the results were absolutely incredible. The top team achieved an AUC score of 0.84, where one would be perfect prediction and 0.5 is a chance level. Now the AUC score weighs the true and false detection rates and is a good measure of success. Our team in Melbourne, led by Professor Mark Cook, conducted the human trial of the NeuroVista device in conjunction with Professor Berkovich and Professor O'Brien. Now the seizure advisory system provided an indication of risk levels of impending seizures. For example, when a patient was safe, the device would show a blue light. When there was a high risk, the device would show a red light. And when there was a moderate risk, the device would show a white light. There were three components to the device. There was, these, well, there was the leads, the implantable recorder, and an external processor. Here we see an X-ray of the implant within the patient. Here, here is a better look at some of the electrodes from one of the subjects. And these electrodes were capable of capturing the electrical activity of the brain. Here we see an example of a seizure recorded from one of the patients. Now the trial demonstrated successful seizure forecasting in several patients. The results are shown in this table and I've highlighted the, the best performers in the green boxes. Now this is a really important result because it showed for the very first time that useful seizure forecasting can be performed in humans. However, the, the device was not effective in all the patients for various reasons. Now the results highlighted here in the red boxes showed that forecasting did not work very well for these patients. Now our team in Melbourne released some of the data from these particular patients 
for our Kaggle Seizure Prediction Contest, which is the subject of the presentation today. The hope was that if we could find a solution for these worst performers, it would provide evidence that seizure prediction was a viable solution for a broad range of patients. Now our competition attracted a lot of attention with 478 teams from across the planet and over 10,000 algorithms were tested. Thanks to the generous support of the sponsors, we were able to offer $20,000 in prize money. Now the competition ended just four days ago. So what you're about to see is absolutely red hot off the press. And the winner is a team called Not So Random Anymore, which is a team of researchers and data scientists from across the USA and Europe. It's a great and fitting name, and it captures how we should think about seizure prediction because their AUC score with these previously failed patients was 0.81. Now this is an extraordinary result because remember that any score above 0.5 demonstrates predictive power and a score of 0.1 would be perfect. Now quick note on this winning algorithm. It was a patient specific algorithm and it was based on 11 different models. The models were blended using a voting scheme which allowed for the wide range of patient heterogeneity um, and it allowed it to be seizure specific. The features that we used in this algorithm were too numerous to mention, but they consist of things that you would expect, like spectral power. Now the take home message here is that seizure prediction has been achieved for a broad range of patients. Um, so you, you might think, so what? Well this is direct evidence that we have a new opportunity to provide a warning system, to titrate therapies and to apply new preventative countermeasures. And we can do it for a broad range of patients, and we can do it with current technology. So this is an excellent result, and I would like to congratulate the winners of the contest. Now before I close, I would like to advertise that we have openings in Melbourne for new positions to work with this great data set, and if anyone is interested, then please contact me. And before I close, I would like to acknowledge yet again um, our collaborators and our sponsors. Thank you very much.